Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. We're back with another one versus one cast. This one's going to be between Coding Squirrel and Willow7 on the map Vulcan's Reach. Before we jump into this, though, got to ask you for a couple of things. Number one, replays. Always need good replays to continue putting out these casts. I need the material. So if you see any good games, if you play any good games, send them on over. Also, please send me Corona Cast. That is the map for the week. Do not forget it. Download Corona or join a lobby where it's hosted play those games out and then if you have a good one send me the replay i'm going to be picking the best one on saturday to do in the live cast and then we'll be playing a game on corona so do not forget to pick up that map all right let's jump into this this is a uef versus cybern traditional matchup this is good old classic supreme commander and these guys are relatively close in rank this should be a good game willow 7 and coding squirrel are let's see 200 rank apart in ladder ratings but i think they're the same in global if i'm not totally mistaken looks like we've got land going down first for both of these guys coding squirrel is queuing up the manual reclaim vulcan does have a pretty substantial amount of rocks both on the spots in the spawn and scattered around in the center of the map. So you're going to be able to boost yourself up for a good early build, no doubt about it. Just got to make sure to queue that up. Coding Squirrel is going for a 100% land build. This is going to be six land factories right off the bat. That is a lot, honestly. Let's see, we've got six... Mass extractors right in the spawn, potentially eight that are relatively protected. Oh, maybe nine. We'll count that one. Nine mass extractors and a bit of reclaim. So I think he will be able to float those factories as long as he can get enough power down in time to be able to spend all of that mass. This is a 10 kilometer map. I do believe that's what it looks like, but I did not actually look at it before I launched. And it's supposed to be a two versus two. Obviously, you can play corner to corner on one versus one. So you're going to be expanding out towards these areas so you can pick up all of that extra reclaim and the concentrated mass extractor locations this is one of the areas where I have a hard time playing one versus ones because I have a hard time balancing out my expansion engineers and my tanks and when you have maps where there's this much of an expanse where you have unprotected sides, then you've got to have enough tanks out there to prevent your engineers from getting killed. I always end up putting out too many engineers, and here we can see two engineers expanding. They're going to be picking up alternate mass extractors as they move out, so the expansion is going to be really, really quick. That's going to boost up Willow 7's economy very quickly. Coding Squirrel, on the other hand, has got a single engineer that is queued up all the way to the outside, and he has a tank and a scout accompanying it. So this is the slower, more methodical expansion, but you're covering your tracks really, really well. And this is the more aggressive expansion that potentially leaves you exposed. I really think Willow7 needs to be getting some tanks out pretty soon, but he is walking up to the front to lay down a total of six land factories right at the front. That is going to give him some good unit flow out into the middle of the map. Ready access to both sides, not necessarily flowing in from the back with that extra walking distance, but it is is going to delay his first tank so he may end up losing these engineers and that tank is making a beeline for him i would imagine he's going to kill at least one before anything can be done about it this engineer queued up for the farthest mass extractor away which means yes there's the second one queued up for these two right here so very aggressive expansion for willow 7 and it's showing in the mass per tick looks like 19 to 15 he's two mass extractors ahead and that gap is probably going to widen as the game goes on coding squirrel is converting a lot more of his mass and build power into tanks than engineers willow 7's got all these extra ngs while these two are actually dying off in the corner successful denial of the expansion years whereas coding squirrel is getting his combat units rolling and he is probably going to restrict willow 7's expansion willow does have an air factory and he's going first jester which is not something that you see very often coding squirrel let's see 600 reclaim and ticking upward rather steadily on 240 mass income and then 340 mass income or 340 power income for willow 7. That is going to give him the extra power that he needs to get that Jester up in the air. And it looks like these guys are running just about neck and neck. Now that is impressive. The Mantis wasted its first shots, 
on that uh, scout, which saved the striker with the help of a little bit of micro. So that's going to be four kills on the striker, three engineers, and one mantis before it finally goes down after killing off half the HP on that mech. So excellent aggression from Coding Squirrel. That is definitely the best way to use a tank. And that's what you get for having intel. Let's you pick up those things very easily, whereas this mantis actually missed the tank on the first encounter. So, yeah, gotta have that intel. So the gesture is out. Looks like we got a transport up next. No interceptors built as of yet, which is typically something that's really abnormal. But I guess he saw that there weren't any bombers, no interceptors, no scouts yet from Coding Squirrel. So he probably assumed that there was no air factory. It was, an, it was a land only build, which he would have been correct in. So he's going strictly for the useful units, not for defensive air units. It was a nice clump of strikers. Unfortunately, there are enough Mantis streaming in from these four factories over here that they will be able to shut down that push. If these guys had continued on, they probably could have killed a couple of mass extractors. They are going to successfully knock out that engineer that was building wall sections, but they are going to get forced back. So that is a failed run by on that part. But now the units are starting to funnel towards the left side. Always poke and prod, never attack in the same area with all of your units because if you start focusing only to one side that leaves your opponent to exploit the other. Three engineers up top gonna lay down a land factory and then immediately a point defense followed by another land factory. So we do have an engineer moving in from Coding Squirrel but no combat units headed to that corner as of yet. Hopefully he'll be able to get there before that point defense goes down but I'm, it's not looking extremely good for him I think yeah that is going to get built so those engineers are going to die and no expansion for the squirrel already 2 T2 almost 3 3 T2 mass extractors online for Willow 7 he is substantially ahead in his mass income 43 to 34 not a small margin Land Factory going down on the outside corner. He does know that that expansion is there. Let's see what he has scouted. Yeah, he got that engineer close enough to tag the Land Factory. So he is going to run in. Now he sees the point defense and he has it tagged. Air Scout coming in as well. This Jester down here in the corner. Let us see what it's looking like. Seven kills, eight kills. And it's finally shot down by that very late interceptor from Coding Squirrel. So, good job on that one. Denied that expansion for quite a substantial amount of time. Point defense is down thanks to a couple of Lobos. Which are going to move in. I don't think there's enough build power to deny this push. Coding Squirrel is going to reclaim this expansion. And kudos to him for doing so. He definitely needs to lock down one side or the other. Because he's kind of struggling for map control at the moment. Willow 7 is pushing out a pretty good amount of Mantis. He does have his in concentrated clumps, which are going to perform much better than streaming units, even though the strikers are a little bit stronger on a one-to-one -one basis. Coding Squirrel going to directly intercept that group of Mantis. Let's see, we've got a total of 14 before they started dying, so not enough to attack the ACU. We should have just run. Coding Squirrel is going to easily kill all those. And he's not really going to be that much worse for wear. And it's going to put him fairly close to a veterancy. So many wall sections. Goodness. Double wall ring across the front end. Funneling all the units in on the right side. Using the terrain to block these off. So Willow 7 is going to confine himself to roughly, well, slightly under half. Slightly under half of the map, about a third of the mechs because he's abandoning these two expansions. And he's just going to go for delaying the progress of Coding Squirrel for as long as he can. Wall sections are incredibly good versus units, but when you have an ACU right here, to me that seems kind of like a moot point because all the ACU has to do over there is walk over there. And he can just reclaim those almost instantaneously to open that wall section back up. Even though damaging it does take a while. All right, units clumping in the middle, Coding Squirrel looking like he is getting ready for some form of attack. He's got two groups on the right, reclaiming everything that was lost by Willow 7, so that is probably going to end up being a net mass donation on that side. This is exactly what you don't want to do. Leave your tank still to take artillery fire. Losing four Mantis without so much as a struggle, and then forced into a retreat. 
but thankfully there is enough of a group here that I don't think there's going to be any issue whatsoever denying this T1. Is there a T2 upgrade? Yes, there is. Not a T2 unit yet, though. Just a couple of engineers. There is still T1 building from the T2 factory for some reason. Not sure why. And no T2 as of yet for Willow 7. He does have... He does have T2 on his commander. Ah, there it is, right there. Just finished the upgrade. He does have T2 on his commander, so he's going to be throwing down a couple of T2 power generators. He is still ahead in power income. Let's see, he is ticking away at around 60 mass and 1.1 on power with 3,500 reclaim. And then Coding Squirrel is on 2,000 reclaim, floating lots of mass and no overflow. Ah, everyone just died a little bit inside. And he is pushing 910 mass per tick. Or power per tick. I keep saying mass. Anyway, Coding Squirrel is doing very, very well on map control. But when you're floating mass, that is never a good situation to be in. And... He is behind on power income, so he's not going to be able to spend as much reclaim when he does eventually bite into it. This is, uh, this is actually perplexing because there's no reason to overflow mass when you have this many T1 mass extractors. You should, as soon as you see the positive numbers, unless you have a big building project going down, you should be grabbing groups of mass extractors and upgrading them strictly so you don't overflow mass. It's not that hard to do. Cerberus are going down for Willow 7 as quick as he can place it because he's got to stop those T1 units. Thankfully, they are getting into the factory, so that's going to be a little bit of an HP buffer. And Rhino's rolling out the bane of T1 units. These guys are excellent at knocking out any amount of T1 spam. When you clump them together, they're very, very strong. And this map is not going to present some of the terrain problems that they struggle with. So, pull those back. There we go. Cerberus turret doing its job, knocking those units down. And that clump, you can see the amount of firepower crammed into this small area is sufficient to wipe out pretty much any number of T1. They just can't get close enough in sufficient numbers to knock those guys out. They are going to succeed in wiping out the entirety of that T1 force. There are three pillars over on this side but they should be able to move in that direction. So, the walls have actually worked out very well for Willow 7. They delayed his opponent just long enough to let him pull a T2 upgrade, and he was actually able to upgrade all of his factories to support factories as well, so that he can start rolling out clumps of rhinos, and having those groups together in superior numbers let him completely overwhelm Coding Squirrel's forces, even though it looked like he had hugely superior numbers. So very nicely played for Willow, and he's actually dropped an immediate T3 upgrade. Hey, he's got the reclaim, why not? That is going to work brilliantly, adding to his wallet. 8,000 reclaim and ticking up very rapidly. There are some T2 units building up down here, but I don't think anything that he can't handle. That's going to be pushing 9,000 reclaim, 63 mass per tick income. Looks like Coding Squirrel is sitting on 2,300 reclaim, barely any further than we saw him just a minute ago, but he is sitting on about 129 mass per tick income. So huge, huge advantage over what Willow 7 has. But Willow 7 is capping his mexes. He's pushing a T3 mass extractor upgrade in the back, which you might be saying, why on earth would you upgrade to a T3 mex when you have T1s? Well, he only has a couple of T1s. They're way out on the edges, and he doesn't have much uncontested map control. So you're going to want to upgrade your core mexes, even though it's less efficient. That means that you are in less danger of losing these 
later on in the game. So he's going to concentrate his eco in the back right here, and he should be okay since he already has all this reclaim out in front. This right here, I think, is a really bad move for Coding Squirrel. He did not have sufficient numbers to move in against that force. He should have waited until he could consolidate those two groups. He had a mobile shield in there, a lot more T2 tanks. He might have been slightly more successful, but I still think he would have lost it. There is a brick here after all. A second one out to the right, and Willow 7 is going to be able to clean up everything in his blockaded area, and he's finally going to be able to start progressing to the outside, I think. What Coding Squirrel did right there is basically just a mass donation, and it's going to end up costing him in the long run. All of these T2 units just going to get wasted by the Cybern forces. You might think that UEF, well, they're the tanky faction. They're going to be superior on a one-to-one -one basis. Well, the Pillar is one of the few units that UEF has at its disposal that is actually less costly than the other faction's equivalent. So one-to-one, -one, they lose versus Rhinos, but mass for mass, they do very, very well. It's just that you can't take it by the numbers. It's not a numbers to numbers comparison. So those two groups were about the same size. Obviously the cyber is going to run away with it since this is a way higher cost grouping. I don't think I've ever actually seen anyone build that many cyber T2 tanks. That's kind of impressive. I like it. I don't think UEF or I, not UEF. I don't think T2 gets enough credit in this game sometimes. It kind of gets skipped in favor of T3. The last balance patch, interestingly enough, tried to um, fix that a little bit. And that's one of the things that's coming up in the next balance focus is to try to kind of fix the tier to tier comparison. If I remember correctly, I may be getting my facts confused. It's been a little while since I've looked at that forum page, honestly. But it's been the topic of some debate over the course of the last several months maybe even longer than that, maybe even the last year, because T2 tends to get skipped a ton, even though it's got the widest variety of units. So it's always nice to see a group of T2 tanks, some other units interacting with each other. Not something that you see every day. All right, with the exception of a single mongoose, by the way, if I am wrong on that, you can probably just check the comments. I'm sure someone will have mentioned it because there's quite a few people that watch this that keep up to date on that kind of thing. So if you're interested in the current balance discussions, I'm sure check the comments and somebody will lay it out there. With the exception of a single mongoose, Willow 7 has gained control of his entire landmass that he has walled off. And he is starting to push forward just a little bit. He's got groups of three bricks and a brick and a pile of T2 tanks. He's going to use those to start laying waste to these opposing forces. Obviously, bricks are going to outrange the majority of T2. And if you only have a single Percival, they're going to kill that no problem whatsoever. Actually, the Percival doesn't look like it has radar coverage, so he is not going to land a single shot on that group. That's weird. There is one showing. Probably a radar somewhere. Ah, uh, well, we're not going to worry about it. Right there. So, he is not going to lose it, but he is going to have to run. Percival getting in range, knocking out those tanks one at a time. Obviously, the 1,600 damage per shot on the Percival is huge. Can't quite one-shot kill a tank, but if they've already been damaged, it can sure enough do the job. So, one per shot dying is a quick way to decrease your numbers. This is what's bad about facing the UEF. Once you get a lot of Percivals in one spot, they are the most effective T3 unit by a pretty wide margin. Five bricks versus five Percivals. The Percivals are going to run away with it. And as the numbers increase, the Percivals win harder, especially when you start throwing in mobile shields. So that can get pretty dicey. That entire cyber and army is going to get mopped up. Percival's standing tall and proud in the victory circle on that one. Coding Squirrel, it looks like, is sitting on 5,200 reclaim. 193 on his mass per tick. It's kind of floating a lot back and forth on the reclaim, but I think that's a pretty close number. Willow 7, 20,000 mass. Holy cow. Four times the reclaim of Coding Squirrel, and he is pulling a similar number per tick, 169. He's not that far behind. 
Especially when you consider that huge amount of reclaim. He's actually building a monkey lord. This is going to be tight. He does not have enough bricks down there to deny those Percivals. He does have three in the north, though, that are going to do a very nice job of cleaning up that expansion. If these move now, I think they can kill all this off easily before that spider is finished. And that would actually be the end of Willow 7, because he wouldn't be able to deny anything. Those need to move. However, we got two Percivals jumping in a T2 transport. That is going to head up to the north. I guess he's going to try to stall those bricks so that he doesn't lose that entire expansion. Although, realistically speaking, the damage has already been done. Going to have four T2 mass extractors going down. Sizable little chunk of eco. Actually enough to put Willow 7, I think, ahead. Yes. That is going to be the pivoting point. And here come the Percivals. So the bricks are going to be forced into engaging these two. Excellent work on that drop. Since they're going to have to prioritize these, that's going to give time for these four to get up here. One brick down, and probably two before that Percival dies. Another shot, there we go, 1500 health, and one shot from the Percival is down. Alright, so, that is going to save that end on the south side. Let's see little bit of a meeting of Percivals and Bricks. The Percivals won out, but just barely, and their numbers are now slimmed. You can see these factories are turning out waves of six. Captured tech. Where did he capture the tech? I did not notice that till just now. Nice! Willow7 has actually got UEF tech online, which means he could potentially start building his own Percivals. Or at least mobile shielding. The mobile shielding would help bring the Bricks up to matching the Percival's strength. Alright, so they're going to kite it out, trying to do as much damage as they can. I really wish that this group had pushed down earlier, because if they had, I think the damage would have been irreversible, even though there were three bricks up in the top corner. Stopping the flow of Percival's to the south, and reprioritizing those two, coupled with the delay of moving these units forward, I think is going to cost Coding Squirrel a great deal. This Monkey Lord is almost, almost done. It's going to be able to mop up those units very, very nicely, completely halting the flow from Coding Squirrel. And that is going to be a tremendous loss because Coding Squirrel has left all of this mass. It doesn't look like that many units, but a lot of it is T3, which means that Willow 7 is about to pick up the mother load of Reclaim. And we've seen already that he has got way more than Coding Squirrel, and now he actually has higher income. So this is going to be a catch-up game for Coding Squirrel. Maybe he will be able to get it back. He does have T3 Air, which Willow 7 does not, although Willow 7 does need to start building some flak. Broadswords go a long ways. They're very, very strong. Incredible amount of DPS being dealt by those. You can see three Percivals and a single Broadsword well on their way to killing that Monkey Lord. Actually, I think it is going to die. There's a Megalith started in the back. Thankfully, there's enough bricks online that they should be able to easily deal with these Percivals that are coming in. But the air is going to be an issue. I don't see any flak or anything coming up yet. We do have a Sam right here that Willow7 just built, but he has moved to T3 Power Generator. And that is because he's quite a bit behind in power, stalling really hard at the moment, actually. And I think part of that is because he's trying to get that factory up to T3 so he can get out some air. He's got to match the T3 air because if he doesn't get ASF online soon, Coding Squirrel is going to be able to outproduce him on air pretty much for the rest of it. Mobile Sam doing its work. I like it. So much vet on that. And it's finally going to get shot down. There we go. But there is a mobile shield. And let's see. Four Percivals coupled with some Mongeese. Not sure why Coding Squirrel is building Mongeese. That's a very, very odd choice. But he is going to have, with the help of the servers, turret plenty to knock back those Percivals. No problemo. And that is going to be the final pushback for Coding Squirrel, I do believe. He's got gunships in the back. He is still producing Mongeese for some reason. I don't think I'll ever figure that one out. And he does have some Percivals coming in from the right since they have now re-secured this expansion. But there's not enough of a concentrated unit base to really push into Willow 7 that much. Hello, Veteranacy. 
Mongeese versus Bricks. Pretty much only one way that can end. Unless you have absolutely flawless micro. Willow7 trying to creep forward a little bit with Sam's. Just to help reclaim some of this area safe from the air. And I think, yes, still critical mass of Bricks. Awesome, awesome. Three Broadswords moving in, though. Because we'll be able to do a substantial amount of damage, but not enough to sway this. Because the last Percival is going down. There's one coming in from the back, but it is not close enough. And those guys are going to have to run from the Sams. So we've got a T3 Scout checking out what's going on in the back there. And more Broadswords. So no ASF yet. Ah, just as I say it, there comes the first ASF. Looks like we do have a T3 factory for Willow7, who has just about matched power income to Coding Squirrel at this point, and he is ferociously mastalled all on that Megalith. But here comes the reclaim on the Monkey Lord. So nice little mass infusion there. He's going to be able to get this sucker up really, really quickly. He started air production, which is going to push him into a really hard stall, but I think he'll be okay once he gets this completed. He is going to need another T3 power generator at some point because if he bites into any more reclaim, he's going to run into this issue all over again. Let's see. Coding Squirrel is sitting on 8,000. 8,700 reclaim with 8.8k power income, 8.2k for Willow 7 with 60. Pushing up on 65,000. Holy smokes. Yeah. Pushing up on seven times as much mass reclaimed as Coding Squirrel on top of having equivalent income. Although Coding Squirrel is getting up there. He's got almost entirely capped T2 mexes pushing some T3s in the back. We're going to have to wait till those reclaim numbers settle in order to determine what's actually going on here. But he is sitting very well eco-wise and obviously on top of map control. So this is still anybody's game. Even though I'm starting to think that Willow 7 is looking stronger and stronger. This Megalith, this is going to be really hard to deal with from Coding Squirrel's position at the moment. He does have a lot of broadswords. Let's hope that, yeah, there's no flak. That is a mistake. Willow 7, you should build flak versus gunships. It is way more effective than Mobile Sam's. On the north side, Fatboy is just about completed. If I were Coding Squirrel at this exact second, what I would be doing is pulling these forces back, getting out of reach of the Megalith, and waiting till I had fire support from the Fatboy. That's about the only way that you're going to win versus this huge group of bricks coupled with the Megalith. But he is going to sit there and tank it. Actually moving forward, not sure what the method is behind this. Megalith is going to soak a tremendous amount of damage. Broadsword's coming in, getting shot down gradually by those Sams. And the Bricks moving up in the back to lay waste that group of Percivals. No progress to be made this day, although that Megalith is going to take a ton of damage. Down to 14,000 health, 10 Two broadswords still alive, eight, and there's the withdrawal and the death of the last combat units, leaving him with 7,400 health. No regen on the Megalith unless you pick that vet up. Actually, tiny, tiny, tiny regen. Nice. Oh, he does have one veteran too. Okay. I didn't see it down there in the corner. For those of you who don't know, I'm actually using shadow play on this screen, and the little green dot at the bottom left of the corner was covering up the vet logo. I was looking at it, I was like, I know the Megalith does not have regen, unless it has a veterancy. And I was very, very confused. <laughs> Alright. Hello, veterancy. Killing off those T2 engineers, probably the easiest vet you'll find outside of T3 engineers. That is going to get him up a little bit higher on health. 18k at the moment. Maybe I was wrong, maybe it didn't have vet. Oh well. I'm going to leave it for the viewers to decide. I am not going to focus on that. There is a Soul Ripper up for Willow 7, which is interesting. Ah, beautiful drop in the back here. Actually going to kill off the energy storage there and probably a T3 mass extractor before those Percivals can get dropped. Yes. Nice work from Coding Squirrel. 
He is going to need more ASF though. He's got to have something to deal with that Soul Ripper. Looks like Willow7 is streaming out ASF at the moment. He's getting a couple of T2 gunships out to deal with these Percivals, but he has far more ASF than Coding Squirrel does. That's going to present a major, major problem. Basically, Coding Squirrel is going to have to resort to Sam's or Flak to deal with that thing, which is actually doable. You can build enough Sam's or Flak in a very short time to deal with a Soul Ripper. Soul Ripper is going to take out that fat boy, which is pretty much the only remaining threat that Coding Squirrel had to offer. And now we also have a Monkey Lord. So that's three T4s online for Willow 7 that he is now going to start pushing northward along with a massive stack of bricks. Percival's moving off to the left. But I don't see anything in the back. He's getting another fat boy up and he is building Sam's. So he is trying to respond as best he can. What he really needs is a mass dump. He needs to kill one or two of these T4s on his side of the map in order to reclaim that mass and get his own forces flowing again. Right now he has a very substantial income, 271, although that is gradually going down. And a full mass bar again. Coding Squirrel, please. For the love of all that is good in the world, don't do this to us. You're sitting on 32,000 mass, which is enough to build like 20 Percivals. Or you could build another Fat Boy. Or you could finish that Fat Boy with way more build power and then build another one. You would not mass stall. Such a lack of build power that's incredibly frustrating to see. I know it's probably just as frustrating for him. <clears throat> because obviously when you see a game crumbling before your very eyes, it's never that easy to deal with. Willow 7, 209 income with 131,000 reclaim. 132,000 reclaim. There goes the spider, unfortunately, to a combination of point defense and a Percival. Coding Squirrel, on the other hand, 42,000 reclaim. So three times the reclaim for Willow 7, a very good portion of that left right at the midpoint of the game on the south side. So I think we can safely say that reclaim won this game for Willow 7. And I think Coding Squirrel just made a bit of a critical error attacking it a couple of times when he really, really shouldn't have. Overall, if you wait with UEF, your units are superior, so you should be able to win in the late game. But if you continually mass dump your opponent, then it's really hard to get ahead because they're going to have superior numbers. Also, Percival's coming in for Willow 7 with that stolen tech. Overall, really solid game from Willow 7. Nothing especially flashy, couple of good moves. I'm impressed that he was able to capture an engineer and get that tech online. That's really cool to see in a game. Um, but just solid gameplay, falling back when he should have and using all of the resources at his disposal to the best of his ability. Coding Squirrel did do very well. His early combat was impressive. He got out, expanded early, killed off the expansions for Willow 7. I like that move, but right at the midpoint of the game, right past the T1 stage, he started slipping on his unit control, and I really think that ended up costing him the game. That's kind of the deal with the larger maps. Once you start moving on to the upper tech level, sometimes it's more difficult to know what to do because you're just not used to dealing with it all the time, and sometimes stuff like this happens. So good game to both these guys. Hopefully you guys learned something and enjoyed this cast. As always, thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to send me replays and specifically Corona replays, and I will see you guys on Saturday for that live cast.